Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. I noticed somebody asking on the Moto Slack forum how to fill a arbitrary mesh with uh, spheres or little balls, right? So I thought, okay, I could figure this out and I'll put up a tutorial. And the key is an item called the particle cloud item. And it's a little bit obscure, but you'll see in a second how that works. So um, I'm just gonna fill up this torus, right? So it could be anything, you could use a dragon or a golf ball or whatever, but I'm gonna use a torus. And just call this torus. And then I'm gonna add the particle cloud item, which is gonna be the hero of the show here. So particle cloud. And if you haven't seen the particle cloud item, it's basically a volume, a sphere or a cube or a cylinder uh, or a cumulus, which I think this was actually originally uh, coded to help create volumetric clouds. Um, so it's a volume, we'll just use sphere, and with a maximum particles and a minimum distance. So minimum distance is going to be, if you uh, think ahead a minute, uh, the, the key to this. So you just wanna make sure whatever item that you wanna fill with um, spheres is enclosed within the volume of the particle cloud. And then we're gonna crank up the max particles a lot. So obviously, if we replace each particle using a replicator with a sphere and the minimum distance, or the rather the diameter of the sphere is slightly less than the minimum distance of each particle, then it's, it's gonna be completely full of spheres. So what we need to do is uh, crank up the number of particles a ton and then find a nice minimum distance here. And one of the things you have to do is really, um, think of it this way, you have to pour more particles into this volume um, so they sort of overcrowd and then you use the minimum distance to call them out because right now with a, a 10 millimeter minimum distance and a you know uh, almost a, a meter um, diameter volume you're not even calling any particles out right none of them are even close enough to hit this uh, so we need to dump a dump a bunch of particles in here and then it's going to take moto a little bit of time to calculate the minim minimum distance because it has to cycle through all the particles and see what the closest neighbor is and the closest neighbor is less than 10 millimeters or whatever then it's got to delete it i'm actually going to bump this up to uh, 20 millimeters actually like 22 we'll do 22 then we'll have a sphere with a diameter of 20 uh, millimeters so and then we'll have about a two millimeter gap between spheres and then when i say a lot of particles, I mean a lot of particle, particles. I'm gonna bump this up to 300,000 particles and the moto's gonna to have to take a second. It's gonna seem like it's hanging, it's not hanging, it's just analyzing all 300,000 particles one at a time, I guess, and seeing how close it is in regards to minimum distance. So let's bump that up to 302,000 and hit enter. And then that's gonna take a second. Okay, so if your computer has not melted down and you're still with us, um, you see I've got a ton of particles in here and they've all been uh, cooled down to a minimum distance of about 22 millimeters. And now I'm gonna turn the particle cloud off. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I think there's a bug in Moto where it reevaluates this uh, minimum distance um, every time in the Moto scene graph changes. So if you add a new item or something, it starts reevaluating that item, which you don't want because it probably took um, a good amount of time just to get to the point we're at right now. So I'm gonna hide that and press in for a new uh, empty mesh item. And I'm gonna call this um, sphere proto for prototype. And then I'm just going to add actually a, a procedural sphere in here because I can you know, adjust the parameters easily. Um, instead of a subdivision globe, let's turn it to faces. I'm gonna turn it to tessellation and maybe um, just one for now so it's not too high poly. Again, we can change this later, of course. And the radius I wanna get down, I wanna 20 millimeter diameter, right? Because the diameter of our particle cloud, or not the diameter, the minimum distance is 22 millimeters. So I want, you know, about uh, a 20 millimeter diameter. So the radius, half the diameter. So I want um, 0.02 divided by two. So 20 millimeter diameter divided by two. So a 10 millimeter radius, which is of course a 20 millimeter diameter. That's what we want, right? So there's our little guy that's gonna populate the inside of this torus. And now what we have to do is, uh, of course, add the replicator. So we'll just get this set up real quick, add the replicator. And we've got the uh, sphere proto for the prototype and the point source is going to be the particle cloud. And you'll see that the uh, every particle in the par particle cloud is going to be um, populated with a uh, sphere, our sphere proto sphere prototype. Okay, so again, it'll take a while to get that populated and this is, obviously a pretty computationally expensive um, proposition, but we're gonna narrow that down a little bit here. And so there's our tightly packed ball of balls. And now what we have to do, of course, 
is delete every um, particle that is feeding into the prototype that is outside uh, the volume of our torus, right? So we get rid of all those particles and now these spheres will just fill up the torus. And I'm actually gonna bring up the schematic here and, and take a look at it in here so you can kind of see the flow of information. Let me just add our uh, replicator there. So here obviously we've got the particle cloud and um, the sphere prototype. And one of the things I wanted to do initially, which I thought maybe I could do was add a, uh, a particle sieve modifier, which I love. And this allows you to, you know, sieve out or sieve out, however you pronounce that, uh, particles based on a number of parameters here. Unfortunately, we don't have a parameter like mesh volume. So it'd be great if we did, and we could just sort of procedurally um, filter out all of the particles outside of this torus mesh. Uh, are not able to do that. Another approach I was going to take, and we will be able to do this, I have on good authority in Moto 13, is to mesh merge particles into a new mesh using the merge mesh operator and um, get rid of them that way and uh, but we don't aren't able to and they, that would enable us to keep this whole thing procedural um, but this is Moto 12 and, and we cannot do that yet so what we do have to do is take our particle cloud and it's not going to go away but what we're going to do is we're going to freeze uh, those particles into points using a command in Moto up here under uh, dynamics which is convert particle cache um, particles uh, to cloud and this will actually um, a cloud of vertices essentially. So it's gonna take this particle cloud and it's gonna convert it to a cloud of vertices. And here's this point cloud right here, which I'm gonna add back into um, the schematic. And I'm gonna unhook my particle cloud. So it still exists in the scene. We can get back to that if we have to, if we wanna change the shape of the container or anything. And I'm gonna spit my uh, point cloud in there. So I've got a tightly packed um, bunch of uh, uh, spheres using this point uh, cloud of vertices instead of uh, uh, this procedural particle system here. But this allows us to do one thing, one additional thing, which is gonna give us uh, what we want. And that is to add a delete mesh op. So delete, delete right here. And that's gonna delete all the vertices by default. But if we add a selection mesh operation, we're gonna select by volume, which is under selection assemblies. So you wanna make sure you're in selection assemblies, select by volume. And this will actually allow us to um, use the the uh, torus as a source for the volume. So we've got to add sources for the torus here. We'll go to existing, and I'm going to select the torus. And now we're going to only keep points within the torus volume. And if I hide the torus here, you'll see now, ba-boom, we have what we want. So let me hide this and uh, hide uh, this guy here. And yeah, so now we have a tightly packed uh, bunch of spheres inside the, let me just hide uh, locators there and hide my original um, uh, point cloud, or uh, actually, you know, those are probably decent. I can always go back to this guy if I want to and up the tessellation to say a two. And there, it did it pretty quick actually. And get a little bit nicer looking um, particles there or spheres so there it is right looks pretty cool and then now uh, you can go in there and 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 render it i'll just do a quick octane render um because octane looks good no matter what you do <laughs> so oh one thing to keep in mind is uh because we are using a procedural item as um the sphere is a procedural item uh, I, if I want to create a polygon tag, now I could use an item tag. I could right click on the replicator and do like um, under shade, do a create an item mask. So that's one way you could do it. You can also do create an item mask here. Basically you're just, you know, selecting this out and putting it in the, into the shader tree. So shade item mask. And the other way to do it, of course, is, is you is you add a material um, tag operator there. So you just add a material tag operator there and give the material name like hello. And over in shading, you could just add a group and instead of selecting, well, I could of course select an item here, but I'm just actually gonna select, uh, uh, this is just another way of doing it. Um, I wanna make sure this is, I turn this on so this gets evaluated here and make sure this is in the scene. So I want to uh, select the hello polygon tag. I could hide my sphere now. Um, and then uh, add a material in there. And then I'm actually just gonna add an octane override to that material and we'll, we'll get into octane here and do a, a cool little octane um, octane render. So octane, I've got integrated into my main Moto interface here, uh, which is which is nice. 
I'll do another tutorial on that, I suppose. Let me just hit render. Uh, everything always looks pretty cool in Octane. So first let's get some luscious uh, depth of field, maybe. So uh, I do not want to use Moto's f-stop for aperture, and I do not want to use Moto's focal distance. I want to use um, the focal distance picker here, and I'll just focus on the front part of my little toruses. And for aperture, let's um, go to like two maybe to get a little more depth of field. Looking good. And then in my uh, uh, schematic here, I'm actually going to unhook this gray, and I'm going to use a uh, gradient texture. So let's see, uh, generator, nope. Mapping gradient two, so there's my octane gradient, and then for the input, I'm actually going to do a random color texture. That's what I want. So the random color texture is going to feed into the input, and that's going to just do a random color in the particle IDs here, and then I can just uh, right click and add a, a few, middle click, add a few points here. Let's do something sort of reddish, and uh, whoops. That looks good. Looks like little sprinkles on a donut. I think we just figured out a good use case for this. Um, yeah, so let's get maybe a little bit of a violet. Looks good, and maybe uh, maybe some blue. Actually, kind of like the white. Actually, maybe a little light blue. Really light blue. Lighter than that. Yeah. All right. Looks cool. So um, let's hide this. And yeah, there it is. Little sprinkle donuts. Actually, it's like taking all those little donut sprinkles and then you have them uh, in your in your cupboard for six years and you pull them out and they're all compressed and frozen into this shape. <laughs> anyway, so that's the gist of um, you know packing any sort of arbitrary mesh item with a bunch of little spheres. And of course, if you have anything sphere-like, uh, you can use that instead of a sphere as the uh, prototype. Yum yum.